welcome uh, to uh, the introduction to Cairo. Um, it's uh, going to be an awesome workshop. It is run by Lucas, who works at Starkware. Uh, we're super excited to have him here. So if you can make him feel as welcome as possible by putting on your screens, uh, that would be amazing. Um, and uh, Lucas has asked if you have any questions about the actual workshop, please feel free to shoot them in the chat uh, or, or just kind of raise your hand and he'll answer them. Any questions that are not related to the workshop, please just wait till the end and he'll be happy to answer them as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to hand over to Lucas. I'm going to be on links. I'll be popping a couple of things in the chat. If you've got any questions about the program, feel free just to, to reach out to me there as well. Uh, Lucas, thank you so much for being here. Over to you. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. And today we're going to check um, how to introduce like an introduction to Cairo um, to be able to use StartNet uh, with ease. So let me share my screen. So here is the GitHub organization for StartNet EDU. Uh, it's basically an organization where you will have a lot of tutorials on how to get started with StartNet and you can find uh, other things such as Cairo coverage or anything else. But today we're gonna focus on uh, Cairo 101, which is the first introduction to StartNet. And this will teach you how to read Cairo. So uh, if you're non-English, uh, there are some translation of the readme and the readme will guide you uh, through this. So uh, let's check how it is. So basically uh, you should read all of this, maybe not all, but it will help you understand uh, how it works. Uh, and basically the principle is that uh, we have a contract which is called the evaluator and this evaluator will grade your exercises. Uh, if your exercise is correct, then you will receive uh, some points. The points are um, represented as an ERC-20. So you can just add the contracts, like the contract address to your uh, wallet to check your points. Um, so to get started, what you'll need is either uh, Argent X or uh, Bravos, which are the two uh, wallets for StarkNet. And you will need to deploy your account contract because uh, in StartNet we have account abstraction. Um, basically, you have uh, a key pair, but you have to submit your transaction to an account contract. So Arjun will uh, handle this for you and will create everything that's needed. Then once you have your account, you'll need ETH to pay for gas fee. So you can uh, either go to the faucet uh, which is not here, which is here. Uh, and you just copy paste your address and you will uh, receive some StarkNet ETH and you'll be able to pay for the fees. All right, now that you're set up to do the workshop, how does it actually work? So you see, you've got a list of exercises. For example, the first one, which is really simple. Basically it becomes harder and harder, but the first one is really easy. So this is the, the code that is deployed. You have to read it, understand what it does and call the right function with the right values so you can get some points. So here you've got a small summary of what uh, the exercise is doing. So here, um, you just need to call the function uh, claim points to get some points. And you've got a small list of what you will learn. But basically this is a uh, StarkNet smart contract. This is the function claim points. And what you need to reach in all the exercises are those two lines. Um, this will validate the exercise, which means that once you validated it, you won't be able to get more points. Uh, and this will just send you the points. So here, exercise one, fairly easy. You just have to call the function. It gets your address, it validates the exercise and it sends some points. So let's do it. Um, you will have the addresses 
here, either on Stark Scan or either on Voyager. Um, both are the uh, blocked explorers that we have. Here, I'm going to use Voyager. So I'm going to go into the contracts. And I'm going to write uh, in the contract, which means uh, invoke a function uh, to have a state modification. So here, I'm just going to go call claim point here. And once the fees are estimated, I can approve it. And sent. All right, so the transaction is sent. Um, it's waiting to be processed. And once it pro it's processed, you will either see if it's uh, correct or if it's incorrect. Uh, if it's incorrect, basically our argent won't let you send a transaction. So you kind of know if a transaction will fail before sending it. Uh, it's gonna take a few seconds, I guess. Yes, uh, the transaction has been accepted. You can see it here. And I received two points, as it is said here. Received two points. And so this is the how it works. Now, this is really easy. And we're going to check exercise two, which is a bit harder, but fairly easy still. Uh, so in this exercise, we'll understand asserts and we just need to claim to call the claim point function. So let's go in the claim point function. Okay, so here it gets my address. It reads a storage variable. Okay, we'll check that later. Then it asserts that the value that I sent is the right one. And if it's done, well, if it's good, then it gives me a point. Okay, so how can I know the secret value? Uh, what is my secret value storage? It's a storage variable. Uh, a storage variable is a storage that is a variable that's persistent through uh, contract calls, which means that um, if I store anything in this, uh, it will be still available in the next call. Uh, so I need to have the value of this. Um, there is a view. The view, well, it returns the value of my secret value. So I can just use that. So let's check this. Go to the contract. Now I want to read because it's a view. And oh, we can query. OK, we've got the secret value. Now write contracts. We input the secret value and we can make the transaction. All right, now let's say that I have a wrong value. What will happen? Um, it will estimate the fees. And okay, I've got an error. And all right, I see that. My value is different from this value. Now let's check the code. Okay, this probably corresponds to that line. So this is how you understand why a value was wrong, what value was wrong. Just check uh, in the execution info what's happening. So yeah, it's a kind of cheaty, but it's okay because you learned how asserts work, you learned how Cairo how to read Cairo, and that's what we want. And so the transaction was accepted. Boom, four points. Now let's check exercise three, which is a bit harder once more. Um, so, all right, let's read this. Um, Contract function, an internal counter, unique to your address. All right, so what we have, claim points, 
uh, get my address checks that a counter is equals to seven. All right, how do I manipulate this? Uh, there is a function increment counter, increments by two, and decrements by one. All right, so what we need to do is call four times this function and once this one, and then claim point. All right, so it makes four calls for this, one more for this, one more for this, which is six calls, which is a lot. And what you can do is use multi-call. What is multi-call? Uh, it's a feature in your account contracts which allows you to have atomic transaction, which means that you can just send a transaction array and your account contract will uh, process them. So how can we use that easily? Uh, let's open a terminal for this. And let's create a file. All right. So what we need to do is to install StartNet.js. I use this one because it's easier for me, but you can use the Python SDK, Golang, Rust, whatever language you want. And you will need to, all right, for this, we'll need to import uh, account because we want to create an account. We want call because we want to create a call array. We want provider. Uh, we want, all right, let's do that for now. All right, now, function. So what do we want? Uh, we'll need, uh, we'll need that. We will need the EC, I guess. Right. And so here I have my configuration for my private key and my address. Uh, you can extract them from Arjun X going here, here, export private key. I won't show mine, but you can. And here is the address, and that's basically what you need for multiple. So, all right, we have this. Now we're going to create our provider. Uh, all right, the provider is what uh, allows you to communicate with uh, the blockchain. If you want to interact with testnet, you can use the default provider. Here I'm not interacting uh, with the testnet because it's a bit slow, but um, here you add a sequencer because you're interacting directly with uh, the sequencer. Uh, the other thing you can interact with is uh, an RPC node, but you won't need an RPC node for this workshop and you paste the URL, which is this for me. All right, now I have my provider. Now I want my account. Uh, provider, then the address. the address and the private key. Uh, get key pair and my private key. Let's have it here. All right, now I can interact with my Argent account from uh, a TypeScript file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a call array. So calls, which is a call array, which needs a contract address. Uh, it's an array, contract address, which is the exercise address, uh, which we can find in the readme. All right. 
contract address. What entry point do we want to call? We want to call increment counter. And we want to call it four times. So we're just copy pasting. So here we call uh, increment counter eight uh, four times, which increments our counter by eight. And we now need to decrement it once. So still, well, I could have copy pasted this. And decrement counter. And what we also need is claim points because we're doing this for the points. Claim points. All right, so now we have our call array. Now we just need to execute it. So we're gonna execute it. Right. And calls. So this is a wrapper for your execution uh, execute method in your contract uh, in your account contract. So it's easy. And here we're gonna log the transaction and we're gonna wait for it. And do yes, of course. And here let's run the program. Yeah. Uh, and I forgot to call main. All right, I'll read some questions. Oh my gosh, Ubuntu people. Yes, Ubuntu is the best, except when it doesn't work. Yes, because I didn't use the right uh, account. <laughs> But, but you got the ID. Uh, you see, I used an account that was uh, already used, so it was already seven, and now I um, I add seven, so it's not working. Uh, is there an exercise for non-deterministic calls? Uh, what do you mean? We have a list of all the exercises here. I'm not sure what you're calling not deterministic calls in Cairo, but here is the summary of all the exercises. Um, so this was like general syntax was really easy. Um, this is, well, this is the three that we've done together. Now you have to do uh, all of them. Uh, you'll get, some points and once once you have all the points you can go here and check all the other tutorials uh non-deterministic jumps yes uh these are basically if else if i'm not mistaken uh it's just if some uh if i don't know x equals one then jump to 15 if uh, x doesn't equal like else jump to 18 that's just an if else. Uh, but this is um, this is not needed because this is like super low level Cairo. It's now called Cairo assembly, um, and this won't be uh, this will disappear with Cairo one. Uh, we'll have like a high level language, a really high level language that will compile to uh, Cairo assembly. But you won't need to know even what a jump is. Does that answer your question? Yes. All right. Wonderful. Uh, let's check if there are other questions. Um, yes. Uh, if the faucet doesn't work, you can also use star gate, um, which is our bridge. And it's the full StarkNet experience. Uh, this is not the right one. Uh, yes. 
So you'll need to connect your MetaMask and your Argent. Mine are already connected. And then you just need to add the amount of ETH that you want to bridge. All right, let's go back to MetaMask, Argent. To switch network, test net, and here. Here, and you can breach your ETH. Um, it will take, yeah, will take 10 blocks before the transaction is sent on L2, and then it will have to wait to be processed and you'll have your ETH. And if you want to bridge them back to Ethereum, you just uh, use this one and it will take, uh, you will have to wait for the block to be proven on L1 uh, before you'll have to do something else on L1. Basically what you do when you withdraw is you send a message to L1, which is stored in the StarkNet contract. And once the message is stored there, you have to call a withdraw on L1 to consume the message and be able to withdraw. Um, I'll go back to the questions. Uh, how did you get, oh yeah. Uh, the contract addresses, they are here. Uh, you've got the direct link to the Explorer. Uh, I didn't use the same address because I'm on another network, but uh, you basically have the addresses here. You just have to click and follow the instructions. Uh, why the trailing comma in the view return? Uh, it's just the way the formatter works. Um, up to, yeah. We still do uh, views and invokes still have to return uh, tuples. Internal functions can um, return plain uh, felt, but external have to return a tuple. Yes. Is jump the best way to create a for loop in Cairo? For now, I would say the best way is um, recursion. Jump is like a super low level instruction. Um, it's hard to manipulate and you could be doing something wrong. But if you master it, then you can use it. I wouldn't recommend it but you can do it. Basically we have Cairo one that's coming and we'll have four loops. So no more recursion, uh, no need to use the jump instruction or anything else. So that, okay. ETA for Cairo one, uh, December I would say, but no promise. Uh, yeah, but basically like Caravan is in, is, is being developed by the com new compiler team. They're working hard on it. So they said it would probably be ready for December and usable in StartNet in Q1, I guess. Um, does that mean we need to relearn Cairo? No, because all the code written now will be portable to Cairo 2. Um, I will show you some snippets of um, Cairo 1, not Cairo 2. I'll show you some snippets of Cairo 1 if, you, if you're curious to see. Uh, here. So, for example, this is how arrays will be handled. No more um, felt pointer plus the length. Um, and you, you'll have pattern matching, which is super cool if you know what it is. If you don't, then it's probably less cool. But basically pattern matching uh, allows you to, it's a sort of switch case. Uh, but here, it's just if uh, remaining equals zero, then it returns the array. If anything else, it does this. Same thing for struct arrays. Yes, same thing for struct arrays. Uh, I 
I haven't seen the new struct, but I don't see why it wouldn't be the same thing. Does competitive programming help when developing Cairo? Uh, what do you mean competitive programming? Yes, using pointers with structs was tricky. Uh, if you mean by competitive programming, like doing a uh, coding competition, then yes, it helps because the more you code, the more you understand how things work. Um, so it's never a bad thing. Also, um, you won't need to understand low-level Cairo, but if you understand how low-level Cairo works, it would help you a lot um, on your, during your coding sessions. Uh, do you have an example of for loop implementation, not recursion in Cairo? Uh, no, we don't have that yet. Um, basically, with, with Cairo 1, we'll have a bunch of features but not all of them will appear in the first release. We'll have the most important uh, one in the first release. And um, some of them will come later. Uh, the repo will be made public uh, someday. I don't know when exactly, but it should be soon. And you'll be able to track the actual ETA of development. Uh, you'll be able to submit PRs but I don't know when it will be public. Anyone has uh, advanced a bit in the Cairo 101 workshop? I believe yes, and you're just too focused to... Yeah. One, two, three, done. Good. Did you use multicall for uh, the third exercise? No, I don't. All right. All right. So it's a bit longer, but it still works. Uh, what's the difference between Cairo and StartNet contracts? A, what's the difference between Rust and uh, Solana contracts? It's the same. Basically, Cairo is a language and StartNet contracts are written in Cairo. But StartNet hints are more restrictive, correct? Yes, um, hints. So Cairo has a functionality which are hints and they allow you to have some Python code embedded in your Cairo code. Um, the problem with this is that you could, if you were malicious, you could just have a hint that would be like, that would be an infinite loop or that would just destroy the machine. So for StartNet, we have to restrict the hints that are allowed because we don't want the sequencer to be destroyed uh, or the prover or anything. So we whitelist specific hints uh, that can be used um, for the safety of the network. But uh, in regular Cairo, not for StartNet, as uh, the program is run locally on your computer, then you're free to do whatever you want. But hints have to be treated carefully, but because um, basically a hint is just like if you just magically added a value in your contract. So you have to check that the value is good uh, and that the sequencer didn't try to fool you by uh, executing a malicious hint. Uh, when the contract is called directory, okay. Uh, back then uh, you could call contracts without account contracts. So you could, for example, directly call, uh, I don't know, an ERC-20, uh, not through your account contract. So when you would call the contract, your address, uh, like this function would return zero. So if a contract was badly um, implemented or uh, instantiated, you could override, like you could take over the contract. But this is not possible anymore. You absolutely need a wallet, like a, an account contract to call a contract because you need to pay for fees and you can only do that with an account contract.
Will Cairo 1 allow for easier ZK proofs in general, you think? Uh, Cairo 1 won't change anything, uh, anything with Starks. Cairo 1 is just a new compiler written in Rust, which allows uh, a higher level Cairo. Uh, as you can see there, you can, uh, you can have more abstraction. But the bytecode will stay the same, uh, as, except that StarkNet Cairo will now compile to Sierra, which is a safe intermediate representation, which won't fail, like it can never fail. So asserts will be gone and they will be transformed in if else's. So that would allow us to prove any, uh, any transaction, even the failed one, because for now, if you send a transaction that fails, we can't really collect fees on it. We can, uh, because of the validate entry points in the account contract, but this solution is not perfect. Um, so now with Sierra, everything would be provable, but the bytecode will stay the same. It's just, the high level Cairo that changes. What is Sierra once again? Uh, Sierra is the is a safe intermediate representation of Cairo. Uh, so the flow will be that your contract will compile to Sierra and then to Calza, which is Cairo assembly. Uh, but I'm gonna check, yeah, Sierra. This is what Sierra looks like. It's not readable, but you don't need to. So, so that's fine. Uh, gotcha, so easier to write, but same work to prove for the prover. Exactly, same work for the sequencers, same work for the prover. Um, it's just easier for you. And so, yeah, this then compiles to this. And here you can see the jumps, but and this is a non-deterministic jump. But yeah, I wouldn't advise you to code that because it's hard. Uh, I think so, yes. Compile your Cairo to Sierra, then your Sierra to Chasm, and then your bytecode to bytecode. Uh, but what's most likely going to happen is that you're going to send a Sierra file to the sequencer. So he's sure that you didn't include failing Cairo. I've got a feeling there's going to be a question coming, but I'll say thank you so much. <laughs> so long, Lucas. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, yes, when you send, a, when you deploy a contract, you send Sierra. This is not sure. Uh, I guess it's, gonna, it's what's going to happen. but. <laughs> um perfect <laughs> thanks thanks so much lucas uh we really appreciate you being here and answering everyone's questions and just giving a good intro into cairo uh next week monday uh 5 30 gmt plus one we are having a, a how to build a dap on cairo uh in cairo sorry uh so please 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 come for that it's run by zkx um and uh let's rock till midnight folks <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, i'm sure lucas has uh, has got things to do on friday um <laughs> uh, yeah so if there's any more questions quickly drop it in if not we'll call it there uh yeah thanks so much lucas and uh, a big thanks to all of you for being here on your kind of friday evening for some of you uh, for some of you maybe friday morning or wherever you are maybe midnight uh thanks so much uh, 150 people on the call really really good uh, for Friday. So thank you so much. Uh, and we do love StarkNet and we do love learning about Cairo. So keep it up. Um, yeah, I think we'll call it there, Lucas. It seems like there's no more questions coming in. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, so thanks for having me and thanks, Encode, for organizing this. Absolute pleasure. And thanks to everyone that asked questions. You must, yeah, contact, or just asking questions is always good. So I really appreciate it. Cheers, Lucas, uh, and cheers to everyone. Have a good, uh, a good Friday. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>